Of course, we're still talking Brexit in the UK, which is back in focus, with the UK set to leave the European Union on Friday, beginning with a transitional period in which both sides will work towards the ambitious target of agreeing a new free trade agreement this year. Now, the EU chief negotiator, Michael Barnier, warned the UK on Monday that the bloc will never, never, never compromise on the single market, accusing Britain of under underestimating the cost of leaving. Well, let's get an update on this and more from Juliana Olainka, our London correspondent. Juliana, so Brexit is here and the EU and UK are not agreeing on trade. What's the latest on this? And it's good to see you again, by the way. Good afternoon, Bissy. Well, yes, as you said, uh, Brexit is just a couple of days away. And according to leaked reports, there are already um, huge uh, rows brewing between Downing Street and Brussels. Of course, trade being uh, the main sticking point on Friday, Britain until the end of the year will be in a, a transition period with the EU. So nothing will relatively change, but uh, the two sides will be trying to thrash out a trade deal. And uh, this is where, um, as the EU have been saying for years, is going to be the most difficult part. As you said, Michel Barnier, the EU's chief negotiator, he's been giving a series of press briefings um, uh, during the week. And he said, really, um, if Britain want a seamless trade deal uh, with the EU, then the European Courts of Justice, which is the highest uh, court within Europe that still has jurisdiction over the UK, will have to remain uh, the same. That uh, simply for the ease of doing business and for the ease of making sure that all of the checks and balances that they'll arrange over the next 11 months stay the same. Um, that's what he said um, on camera. He was always, he was all he was also backed uh, by the Irish um, uh, Tushok, who also said that there has to be some sort of alignment. Otherwise, things will go unchecked. Now, that's a big issue for Boris Johnson and hardline Brexiteers, because one of the reasons why uh, Britain decided to Brexit in the first place is because they wasn't happy with the bureaucracy and the power that those in the EU had over the UK court. So that's a problem. Also, as well, there's another um, leaked document that was given to online site Politico, uh, where apparently a lot of the EU27, the remaining countries, are saying that they want one simple channel. They do not want uh, the UK to be going around to each individual country trying to arrange their own trading deal. Even though trade deals will be different with each um, different nation, they want it to remain the same. So, you know, the countdown to Friday is on and already um, the war is brewing and it's looking likely to be a very long, a very lengthy, a very uh, tense 11 months. Well, we have a few days to Friday to see how things play out. But earlier on, you spoke to Jimmy about uh, Roy's faith in the UK 5G network. Now, is there any verdict yet? There is a verdict. And, it, you know, I just uh, read the verdict before I came into the studio, so I'm not as up to date as I would like to be. But yes, uh, Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, he has made a decision on Huawei, and that is he will allow Huawei uh, to build some parts of Britain's 5G infrastructure. Already the headlines are saying that this is the most crucial uh, decision that Prime Minister Boris Johnson is likely to have over the next five years. Um, now, he was very uh, careful to say that uh, Huawei and uh, Beijing essentially wouldn't uh, be um, given access to the main components of the 5G infrastructure, but they will be building part of it. And I think uh, the estimates are about 35%. And this is a big win uh, for China, a big win for Beijing, because of course we know that at the moment, even though it's still muted after they signed that phase one trade deal, uh, Washington and Beijing are still um, deep in this uh, tariff trade war. Britain is trying to, after Friday, establish larger trading relationship partnerships with the US and China. And the fact that uh, Boris Johnson has kind of ditched the advice uh, from his main uh, large superpower ally and gone with the Chinese, you know, will be seen as a win um, for China. There have been some concerns. This debate has been going back and forth before uh, Boris Johnson was prime minister under Theresa May's tenure. And some senior Tory officials still uh, believe that is it is some threat. But, you know, Britain is going out in the world on its own after Friday and they do need um, this economic boost. And 
Boris Johnson is insistent that without the Chinese help to build 5G's um, uh, network and infrastructure, then Britain could be economically behind. So I'm sure, you know, we're likely to get a tweet or an update from uh, the US President Donald Trump later in the day, but the Huawei decision has been made and it will be allowed in Britain. All right, Juliana, just before you go, bring us up to speed with the intraday numbers coming from the currencies and the equities market. Absolutely. Well, the coronavirus still is affecting the equities thousands and thousands of miles away in London. At intraday, the FTSE All Share is up 0.15%. The FTSE 100 is up by 0.22%. And the FTSE 250 is slightly down at 0.10%. In currencies, the pound is down on the dollar by 0.37%. Also down on the euro by 0.35% and down on the Japanese yen by 0.42%. Thank you, Bessie. Hey, thanks, Juliana. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. And in Asia, stocks declined today amid fears about the ongoing coronavirus outbreak that continues to spread. South Korea's Kospi dropped 3.09% to close at 2,176.72 in Japan. The Nikkei is at 2,255 shed 0.55%, closing at 23,215.71, while the Topics Index declined 0.6% and in its trading day at 1,692.28. Shares in Australia declined also as the ASX 200 dropped 1.35%. Markets in China and Hong Kong are closed today for the holidays. And U.S. stock index futures were higher this morning after the Dow posted its worst trading day in about three months. Early, earlier on, the Dow futures were up by 57 points, indicating a positive open of more than 49 points. Futures on the S&P 500 and Nasdaq were also higher. Global investors have been concerned over the impact of the coronavirus on the economy as the number of cases worldwide keeps rising. Well, let's talk oil now. Oil futures for, fell for a sixth session in early trade today. Of course, as the spread of the virus in China and several countries raised concerns about the hit to economic growth and oil demand. Brent crude was down 0.6% at $58.95, while U.S. crude futures were down 0.6% at $52.85 a barrel after slipping to its lowest since early October. Oil investors are concerned that travel advisories, other restrictions and any sizable impact on growth in the world's second biggest economy and elsewhere will dampen demand for crude and its products amid plentiful supply. When Business Incorporated returns in just a moment, we'll take a look at the global NAFTA market and that will be on our commodity segment. Do stay with us. <music> 